today. I want you to call your friends, get a hold of everybody you love, even call your ex-husband. I'm telling everybody, this word is a word that will strengthen you, give you hope, and it'll bring a turnaround in your life. I'm Pastor Vince Schott. I'm the senior pastor of Glad Tidings right here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. So many new people are moving to the area. I'm going to give you our address, and the team will put it on the television screen right now, 3456. Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia. Services, 10.30 Sunday morning and Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. So I want to personally invite you to be a part of this great church. Not because I'm the leader. We have great deacons. We have phenomenal elders, incredible trustees, and a great staff. And then people are just coming. The choir's filling up. The children's church is filling up. The youth group's filling up. But more than that, those things are wonderful. The presence of God and the Word of God are being proclaimed right here at Glad Tidings. Today, I want to say this statement to you. No matter how much you're hurting, and I'm sorry you're hurting, no matter how much loss you've had, and a lot of you had a lot of loss, more than you ever imagined, or you were even thought, I'm built for this. I'm not built to have this many losses, this much hurt. But here's what the Word of God says. I know my Redeemer lives. It's found right here in Job 19.25. In the middle of his incredible loss, he made a prophetic statement to himself, to his enemies, and declared to God, I know. Here's what it says. I know my Redeemer lives. What's this word Redeemer? That which has been lost taken away, stolen, God can give it back to you. He's able to give back to you that which has been taken away from you. And there's going to be faith. When you hear the word of God, a little faith gets in your heart. And when you get a little faith in your heart, then you get a little faith in your mind, in your mouth, and in your being. And God is the God that builds altars of his intervention. And your problem, now I've heard it all. I guarantee you, your problem is not the worst of all. Now, it's bad, but it's not the worst of all. And I want to say this to you right now. I'm going to show you in the Word of God, my Redeemer lives. I know He lives. I've seen it with my own eyes. I, I've experienced it in my life and so many people's lives. I know. Say it. I know my Redeemer lives. Today, I'm going to bring it, and you're going to be encouraged and I believe many of you are going to get back what you've lost in Jesus' wonderful name. J'aime Jésus. Il est mon Seigneur et mon Sauveur. I love Jesus with all my heart. Saya mengasihi Yesus Kristus. Yesus Kristus, Tuhan dan penyelamatku. Ginu kaluguranda ka, Jesus ika in kanakong tagapagligtas. Come on, make some noise if you feel his presence. I want to just say to you what a privilege it is to be here. And I want to thank the Glad Tidings family. They pay for all the equipment. They, they pay for the, for the airtime. And we never have to ask for money. And I'm just so grateful for that. And that's a little dangerous for you because we're not going to ask for money today. So I'm not necessarily going to be nice. I'm going to tell you the truth. The niceness isn't one of the fruits of the Spirit anyway. Truth is. But I'm going to tell you the truth today. You can feel sorry for yourself. You can be wounded. You can go to a counselor. Some of you are going to even get counsel in heaven. Just listen to me right now. You're going to be hurt depressed, but really God can turn this mess that you made around. God, he has the power, but for God's power, he's a gentleman. 
And doesn't the Lord say in Revelation, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I'll come in. He is still a gentleman. He, does, he makes house calls, but he's a gentleman. So he's going to knock on your heart, on your will, and you're going to have to cooperate with God if you want to turn around. You know, your marriage is so far gone. It's just gone. It's toast. There's no way. And sir, you've been such a jerk. Who would want you anyway? Come on, everybody. But I've seen God turn it around. I've seen people who hate each other with every fiber of their being. And I've seen a lot of times they kind of deserve it. I've seen God change their thinking, change their heart, change their family, and put them back together. There was a, a man who became a deacon in our church, but he was no deacon initially. And him and his wife just really despised each other. They really just growled at each other every day, avoided each other, mad at each other, hated each other. And both of them had been divorced before. So what's another divorce? What's a third divorce? You've been divorced once. Let's just keep it going. Let's set a record in our family. And the Holy Spirit spoke to the wife. Because my I just know my Redeemer lives. And the man said, if she'll just once say she's sorry. She doesn't know what the word sorry means. But if she says once that she's sorry. God, I'll know you've talked to her heart because she won't do it. So he put what is called a fleece before the Lord. But he said, God, if she'll say her, she's sorry. She doesn't have to expand. Just say, I'm sorry. I'll do whatever I can to be humble, to be loving. But I've got to hear that word because I don't trust her. She's hurt me so bad. And the Holy Spirit visited her. I know my Redeemer lives. I want to say this to you. I know my Redeemer lives. And the Lord gently said to her, just tell him you're sorry. This is not why you married him. This is not what you want. This is not the outcome you were hoping for. Just say you're sorry. And she said, well, what can it hurt? And she said to her husband, honey, can I just tell you something? I'm truly sorry. Their hearts so joined. They're deacons in the church, and they're a little bit embarrassing, honestly. They're just hugging each other all the time, loving each other. They're like two old lovebirds. They just, oh, she's the best. Oh, he's wonderful. But God redeemed it. Now, let me tell you about how God redeems things. Listen, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says this, Eyes haven't seen nor ears heard what the Lord has prepared. Listen to it. He's prepared something for you. He's prepared a way out. He's prepared an answer. But eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. So you don't know this. You don't know how it's going to work. But here's the catch. You have to participate. It says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Now, how do you love God? Pastor Shot, I really don't know. How do you love God? When God's word says something, do it. The one who loves God is the one who obeys God. It's your way to say, I love you, God. I submit my will, my heritage, my backgrounds, my strength, my failure to your lordship. And God has hidden things for you, hidden answers for you, if you begin to love God or obey God. And this obedience will bring a blessing. Rather than living in confusion, hurt, woundedness, or a curse, you'll begin to walk in blessing. And it's a lot easier to breathe in blessing. It's a lot easier to love when the blessing of God is on you. It's really, really hard. In fact, the Bible says the goodness of the Lord causes a man to repent. So I'll say this to you, and I know your problems are the worst of all. And I know your situation is impossible. Anyway, let me just tell you the truth, okay? I know that my Redeemer can live in your impossible situations, and He can redeem it for His glory. I'm Pastor Vince Schott from Glad Tidings in Vancouver, and I'll be right back. Come on, put your hands together! Come on, make some noise if you feel His presence!
Glad Tidings Children's Church now meets in the Tree Fort. Your children will experience the presence of God and have fun doing it as they have church kit style. Learning about the love of Jesus with games, puppets, praise, and worship. Ages 5 through 12, everyone is welcome. Our nursery at Glad Tidings is a fun and safe place for your little ones to play and learn about the love of God. Our goal is to support parents in building a Christian foundation through a nurturing church. Here at Glad Tidings and Amazing Grace Church, 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, BC, we are hungry for God. We are praying, and we just finished a fast. God, we want to press in and see you in this place. We want to see you break out in this place. We worship God and put him on the throne, and we just, we just push in for just wild and all-out worship and praise. And the Word of God tells us that God is enthroned on the praises of His people. We seek the Word of God. So here we want to invite you to join with us, and we're excited to invite you. 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, BC, British Columbia. Glad Tidings and Amazing Grace. I'll see you here. Hi, and welcome to Glad Tidings Church, located at 3456 Fraser Street. My name is Josh. And I'd like to invite you, if you're 13 to 18 or grade 8 to grade 12, to come and join us at our youth group. Our youth group meets every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. in our newly built youth center. And it's meant for the youth. So we have fun activities like games, food, fellowship, praise and worship, and of course a word. Here at Glad Tidings, we believe in investing in the next generation and ensuring that they'll be able to succeed through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So. If you're a youth, why don't you come and join us and become part of our family here at Glad Tidings. God bless you. Come on, make some noise if you feel His presence. Come on. Listen to Psalms 30, verse 5. Just listen to it. It says that weeping is for the night. It's not for a lifetime. You can be hurt. You can be wounded, you can be disappointed, you can just be terrorized, whatever it is. But the Bible says it's for a night. And a lot of you have called a darkness over your soul, depression over your mind. You've cursed yourself, but it says joy will come in the morning. All we have to do is get you through this short time because it won't be forever. It's a season of your life where it's confusing. It's a season of your life that you're not having any fun, but God gives us a promise. Say this with me. I believe in you, God. I believe in what you say, God. And so what happens is your feelings, your emotions, your disappointment, your record keeping of all the people who have wronged you, you begin to rehearse it, regurgitate it, and it becomes your life. But you have to try something new right now. And you need to say, this is for a night, this is for a season, but joy will come in the morning. Had a lovely couple more than anything in the world, they want to have a baby, is three months along and it dies. It's in the womb and it dies. Oh, they're beyond. Who, who, who did this? What's, is God cursing us? Is, it, what is this? Is it genetically impossible? Just all the normal questions, great hurt. But they came together and said, God, we love you. And God, we're going to keep our heart right, and we're looking to you. And they got pregnant again and again. <laughs> Come on, and again and again, four times and again. And God gave them a beautiful family, and they cherish every moment of their family. They cherish their children, the events of their children, the children's faith in God. But there was a night that was pretty dark. There was a time where they had to make a choice. And they had to say, I know my Redeemer lives. You've lost your job. I know my Redeemer lives. Your mate left you. I know my Redeemer lives. Someone died prematurely. I know my Redeemer lives. Your business didn't work. You got stolen from. I know my Redeemer lives. You've got to change from blame to faith. You've got to make that change. Now, let me give you a few things my Redeemer 
lives. Let me just give you a few things in the Word of God. David was exhausted beyond. And he went to a place he knew. He had been there. He had success there. And when he went there, the enemies invaded uh, and took his children, took his wives, took all of his money, burned everything he had. And he went before the Lord. You'll find it in 1 Samuel chapter 31 through 8. And he said, God, is my life over? And everybody was mad at him. He's mad at himself and a little mad at God. What should I do? Should I just give up or should I pursue? And the Bible says, the Lord said to him, pursue, go after it. And the Bible said they went after it. It's very interesting. And they recovered all. This is for somebody here. You've lost a lot. But there is a word that says God will cause certain situations for you to recover all. The reason I'm going to have you say it, because faith begins with speaking it. Just say in your loss, I'm going to recover all. I'm going to recover all. Everything that's been taken from me, everything that's betrayed me, everything that's went wrong, I declare according to your word, God, I'm going to recover all. And I believe God's going to give you a strategy. God's going to tell you how to do it, when to do it, why you're doing it, and give you a strategy. And your life won't be just a complete miserable wreck. It won't be all the bad things that have happened to you. But you've had some bad things. You've had some bad days, months, years. But God gives a word and he helps people recover. Not just some things, all. There was a man in the church and they had a son and the son died. And him and his wife, they, 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 they got on a religious weird tangent. They tried to raise a kid from the dead. I wasn't involved. I wasn't their pastor. But it was a serious, serious mess. And they were broken. They were crushed. And he began to recover from this. And she didn't. She ran off with another guy, said, I don't want her two other daughters. It was horrible. And he had a year and a half of absolute terror. He's got two little girls. He lost his son. His wife doesn't want him, and she doesn't want to be this girl's mother anymore. But I, I just began to pray. He began to lift his hands. He began to thank God for his circumstances. And God brought the most wonderful woman. I mean, a wonderful woman. And the girls loved her, and God put everything back together. I remember I did the wedding, we're in the back room coming out. I said, tell me your pain today. He said, my joy has overcome my pain. I say that for you, your joy of what God's gonna do in your life will overcome your pain. Come on, put your hands together. Shalom, hello. I'm Pastor Israel Pochter. I'm a pastor of Beit Hallel Congregation in Israel, in the city of Ashdod. I'm so blessed to be here in Canada with Glad Tidings. And first of all, I want to say thank you, Glad Tidings. You've been such a blessing. It was amazing to see what God is doing on your services. When I preached the word to release God's blessing, God was moving. People were touched. It's so powerful. But also, I received a lot being here. So really, thank you very much. It's a blessing to learn from, from friends and brothers. And I really blessed by being in Canada. So thank you, Canada. You have so many good people here, good hearted people, people who live for Jesus. In Hebrew we say for Yeshua, for his kingdom. You glorify Jesus and it's just wonderful. It was such a pleasant time to be here with you and see what God is doing in Israel, what God is doing in our land, how he will fulfill in biblical prophecies today in our time, in our generation, but also to see the deep connection of Canadian Christians with the land of Israel, all the prayers, all the faith, all the excitement. You are real friends of Israel. So thank you very much. And now saying that, I want to release Hebrew blessing, biblical blessing. So just receive the blessing in the name of the Lord. Ivarechecha Adonai Vishmerecha. Yaer Adonai Panavelecha Vehunech Vehuneka. Isa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. Beshem Yeshua Hamashiach. 
in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Shalom. Come on, put your hands together. Let me take you to Joseph. You know, his brothers were a little harsh with him. When they throw you in a well and they sell you as a slave, those aren't the best kids to grow up with. But God made him second in command. And there was a famine all over the earth. And he was in charge of all of his food, all the food of the earth. And who showed up? They didn't recognize him. His brothers. Oh, this is a time to get even. This is a time to mess with my brothers. But he didn't do that. He provided. And he asked him an odd question. He said, how is your father? And they're kind of like, what? He's doing, he's fine. Are these all the brothers? No, we have one more. It was a brother named Benjamin that Joseph had never met. Even in his Egypt, even in his brokenness, God behind the scenes kept his father alive and gave him a brother of his own blood. And when they realized it was Joseph, Joseph stopped him. He said, you meant it for evil. And I believe some people have meant it for evil in your life. I know some people haven't treated me really good, and I'm just wonderful. Aren't you? We're wonderful. I don't want to ever hurt anybody. I don't try to destroy anybody. I want to help people. And I know you do too. But there's some people who just get crazy thoughts. And for some reason, they want to hurt you. They don't like you. And now he's in a position of strength. What would you do if you were in that position? Would the hatred cause you to miss the blessing? Would the bitterness cause you not to see what God was doing? And he said this statement. He said, look, you meant it flat out for evil. But God has meant this. Listen, for good, for the preserving of many lives. You see, if Joseph would have stayed in Egypt, he would have died with all of his brothers because there was a famine there and there was no food. But God sent him ahead. Didn't send him on an easy route. And some of you have not had an easy route, but that route you've been on has made you into the beautiful person you are. It's made you humble. And right now you can say, this was the humbling of God, why my life was so hard. But God's going to bless you. God's going to bless. He, he blessed Joseph and he made Joseph a blessing. And the Bible said when his father came to him, they cried uncontrollably for a long time. But it wasn't the tears of yesterday. It was the tears of joy. And he looked at his brother and he looked at his father and they said, you're alive. And Joseph's father blessed, listen to me, blessed Joseph's sons who Joseph thought they'll never meet this great man. You see, there's a blessing in your problems. There's a blessing. God has in store for you hidden things but if you die in your bitterness and hatred and anger and my life is horrible, and some of you, all you do is talk about or rehearse what's went wrong in your life, and there's no praise. You don't see anywhere in prison, anywhere in the heartache, anywhere where he was forgotten, where this bitterness overtook him. Because when he had his opportunity before Pharaoh, he wasn't bitter. He was prophetic, and you can be prophetic too. I'll be right back. Come on, put your hands together. We celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, who thousands of years ago was born in a manger, who came to seek us and to save us. Well, come celebrate Christmas with us here at Glad Tidings Church of Vancouver, BC. On Sunday, December 17th at 10.30 a.m., we will have a special Christmas celebration where we will sing and dance and just worship God for His perfect love for us. Then, on Sunday, December 24th at 6 p.m., we will have a communion 
and candlelight service where we will just honor God and just thank Him for sending His Son to, to come and be our King and come save us and give us a new and eternal life. And lastly, join us as we welcome the new year. On Sunday, December 31st at 10 p.m., we will have a celebration and a countdown and together as a family, we'll joyfully enter 2024 and anticipate all that God has in store for us. So wherever you are and whoever you are, Glad Tidings has a place for you, God has a place for you, and we can't wait to see you in church. Come on, put your hands together! Everything that's happened in my life, God's meant it for good. My childhood that was very difficult, God meant it for good. The pain I've had, the hurt I've had, God's meant it for good. Would you just do that with me right now? God, you've meant it for good. God, I thank you. You're a good God. I thank you that I have good days ahead of me. And I just know it. I know it that I know it that my Redeemer lives. I can't understand everything. I, I can't figure everything out, but I just know God is good. I know God is love. I know God's hand is on your life. And I know for a fact that your Redeemer lives. As David said, should I go after it? And God said, go after it. And he recovered all. And I'm going to believe. Let's just pray together. I'm going to believe that God's going to cause you to begin to recover the things that were lost. I believe the things that were lost that were bad, God's going to give you something better. I do with all my heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for recovery. Recovery in the emotions, in the mind, in the finances, in relationships. And I pray your goodness would overtake us. Lord, I pray for the impossible situations where people are paralyzed and stunned. I pray this word today would go in their heart and they will say, I just know it. I know it. My Redeemer lives. Well, I'm Pastor Vince Schott. I'm the senior pastor by the amazing grace of God of Glad Tidings Church in Vancouver, British Columbia. And many of you, who doesn't vac vacation in Vancouver? It's a beautiful place. If you're here on a Sunday, come on and join us at 1030, 3456 Fraser Street. You'll be glad you did. There's an unusual encounter with heaven going on right now. It's unusual. And there's a tangible, undeniable presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We also have service on Wednesday night, full-fledged service, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. So I want to invite you. And then come to our Facebook. You can see the services. And if you've moved here, come on. Be a part of the family. So many new people are coming. There's All the nations are coming. I just consider it an honor and privilege to be here. We have unity. We have peace. We have the Word of God and the presence of God. We only have one thing missing, and that's you. So I want to invite you to Glad Tidings right here in Vancouver. Well, I'm Pastor Vince Schott, and I'm the senior pastor of Glad Tidings Church. And it is a privilege, it's an honor, and it's a joy to bring the Word of God to you across Canada. Well, God bless you, every one of you. And by the way, your Redeemer lives in Jesus' wonderful name. Come on, let's sing it. Come on, sing it.